Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at how we go about testing multiple hypotheses about regression coefficients. And this leads us to talk about something which I'm going to call F tests. Okay, so remember what we were doing in the previous sort of testing situation. We had some sort of regression equation. Y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus beta p times xp, let's say. And the idea here was that we had some sort of population, and within that population there was some sort of true value of, let's say, beta 1. And based on the fact we only had a sample from that population, we were trying to test whether it was actually the case that beta 1 was in fact equal to 0. That was the null hypothesis. Uh, and, and, and beta 1 in the population, in fact, whether that was equal to 0. That was the that was sort of main hypothesis we were testing. So the non-hypothesis here, we had sort of h naught, beta 1 is equal to 0. And that's okay. We, we sort of spoke about how we would go about doing that. We'd go about that doing a, forming a t statistic and then comparing that with a t distribution. Well, that's okay if we just want to basically test one particular regression coefficient. But if we want to test multiple regression coefficients, we can't do that using our current framework. So we have to think about how we would go about constructing a test of this. So here, our null hypothesis is actually going to involve a number of different regression coefficients. So it's going to be, let's say, beta 1 is equal to beta 2 is equal to dot dot dot, beta p, which are all equal to 0. So our null hypothesis here is that in the population, all of these particular coefficients, or, or the effect of each of these variables, each of these x's, is in fact jointly equal to zero. Yeah. So that's what we're now testing. We're testing for the joint non-significance of all variables in our model. Okay, so what's the alternative hypothesis here? Well, it's quite similar to the t-test in the sense that um, it's a sort of two-tailed test, and if any of the individual coefficients do actually happen to be significant, um, so that's any of the coefficients not being equal to zero, then that's going to lead us to reject the long hypothesis. So what we should expect is that if we have a regression where some of our coefficients have very high t stats, then it's unlikely that they're going to also, uh, it's unlikely that we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis in this sort of situation when we're testing multiple coefficients. Because if one of these coefficients or one of these variables is significant, then that means that they're all not jointly unsignificant. So that's something to look out for. If we have a sort of high t-stat, then we're probably going to also um, reject them under a sort of multiple hypothesis testing framework. Okay, and how do we go about testing this for the multiple hy hypothesis sort of situation? Well, the way in which we think about this is we think about having, first of all, what we call the sort of unrestricted regression. And in this unrestricted regression, we have, well, it's, it's actually just what we have up here, right? This is our regression, and we have sort of included all the variables, all the x's, which we're interested in, in testing. Then we from that we actually get something which we call the sum of square residuals so the idea here is that from this regression we get some sort of estimate of the population error which we call residuals and the idea here is that we square those residuals and add them all up so you can sort of imagine if our model is fitting the data really really well then the sum, then the sum of square residuals is going to be quite low because our errors are going to be quite low Okay, so we get the sum of square residuals from this unrestricted regression. What do we then do? Well, then we actually have to perform what we call the restricted regression, which in this particular null hypothesis just means that our restricted regression is just going to be y is equal to some constant, alpha. Yeah, so I haven't included any of the x variables which, are, which we previously included in our unrestricted model, but the reason it's called the restricted model is because I'm now restricting this model saying that it basically doesn't depend, or the dependent variable doesn't depend on the independent variables. Okay, so just, just sort of predicting y is equal to a constant, or y is equal to its, its mean, what do we then get for the sum of square residuals? So we get some sort of sum of square residuals for the unrestricted, uh, sorry, for the restricted model, 
And we should expect that, or generally, whether I'm adding sort of rubbish or whether I'm adding um, statistically significant variables, the sum of square residuals from the restricted regression is always going to be higher than the sum of the square residuals from the unrestricted. Because whether I'm adding noise or whether I'm adding statistically significant variables, any sort of extra variation in independent variables helps to reduce the error associated with predicting the dependent variable. So it's always, so the sum of square residuals for the restricted regression is always greater than for the unrestricted. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it significantly greater than the unrestricted regression? So in the sense of, if you sort of think about it in comparing the R squared with the adjusted R squared, the R squared always goes up by a little bit if I add an extra variable to my model. But the question is, does it go up by an amount which is significant enough? And that's the same sort of question which we need to ask ourselves here. So how do we actually ask ourselves this and how do we test this? Well, we form a statistic which we call the F statistic, which is equal to the sum of square residuals from the restricted regression minus the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model. Right, so that's the sort of difference in um, the sum of square residuals. And we expect there to be at least some difference because the sum of square residuals in the restricted model is always greater than the unrestricted model. Well, that doesn't really mean that much. This now has units because I'm adding together sort of squares um, of errors in my dependent variables, so it's going to have some sort of units. So the idea is that we compare that with the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model. Yeah? Because now we've got sort of, we're sort of comparing um, things all in sort of unitless terms and, and we can sort of then understand whether the difference between these two variables is particularly significant or not. But in order to make this a sort of distribution which, um, or under the null hypothesis, have a distribution which we can compare it with, we actually divide the numerator by the number of restrictions which we're placing. So. In this context here, we would have, um, well, we're, we're saying that we have sort of P regresses in the um, unrestricted model. So we'd be dividing the top by P and we divide the bottom by the number of observations uh, that we have in our sample minus P minus one. Yeah, and now actually it happens to be the case that um, under the null hypothesis, our F statistic which we formed actually follows some sort of distribution. And it's a distribution which we call the F distribution. And the sort of keys in the name, the way in which we form the statistic. So the idea is that if the numerator here is particularly large relative to the denominator, so let's think about what that means. Well, that means, well, when I um, move to my unrestricted model, I explain a lot more than for my um, restricted model, which leads the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model to be significantly lower than the restricted model. Well, that's going to be quite large relative to what the sum of square residuals unrestricted model is. So the idea is that if the value of our F statistic is larger, that means we are more likely to reject the null hypothesis. But what we need to do actually is we need to look up in an F table. Um, just like we did for a T in the sort of T table. But an F distribution has, in fact, two degrees of freedom. So we say it's got degrees of freedom one and degrees of freedom two. The first degree of freedom which we used to look up in our F table is, in fact, the sort of P from our numerator. And the second degree of freedom is just our denominator or the thing we're dividing our denominator by. So it's just N minus P minus one in this context where we're testing for significance of all regression coefficients. So we need to look up in our sort of F table, um, we need to look up a sort of degrees of freedom one equal P, degrees of freedom two equal to M minus P minus one. And again, just like we do for a T test, we're normally using a sort of 95% confidence interval. So we look up for a sort of P value of 0.05. And this will tell us some sort of critical value, right? And we will reject the null hypothesis if the value of our F statistic is greater than our critical value of the F distribution. Okay, so that's how we go about testing for significance of multiple regression coefficients.
if our value of the F statistic which we formed is greater than um, the critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. In the next video, I'm going to talk about this in ways of an example. I'll see you then.